Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my video about how Vita Ayala is emerging as a queen maker in the land of $75 a page. Before I start, is this you graphic novel, rock and roll ninja graphic novel. So more people continue to get uh, expendables. It's very gratifying and relaxing to see the same people who have been writing once a week and I'm being like, it's, it's a little bit more time, it's, you know, it's the holidays, and then they say, hey, I got it. Um, a lot of people have been asking for uh, tracking information on packages, and I think moving forward, um, uh, the larger campaigns, we will go for them. Uh, with the smaller campaigns, you know, it's like three people are like, hey, where's my book, and you just send them a replacement. But uh, for larger campaigns, you'll usually have a few dozen people who kind of get uh, antsy about it and being able to go to their tracking number and see that it fell behind a desk at the Poughkeepsie airport <laughs> or the, the Poughkeepsie post office three weeks ago, it makes them feel better. Uh, so we'll add that in there. The other thing is that uh, some people have been getting uh, a, a couple of the uh, books went out where they either didn't have the dog tags or they didn't have the entire goodie bag. And uh, once we've gotten all the books out, I'm going to do a call for missing and damaged books, but it's also going to be missing items. So yeah, if you didn't get the dog tags, send you some dog tags. Uh, there will be an update and I'll mention it in a bunch of videos. That's still a little while away because we're still doing the uh, uh, main fulfillment. So anyway, <laughs> Nadia writing some mutants, y'all. Okay, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody knows who Nadia is. So uh, Nadia Shamas is uh, writing an X-Force annual. And this is a huge deal to the person who engineered it. Uh, to everyone else, this is just a, you know, a almost literally who promoting the work of a literally who. Wait a minute, Vida Ayala is gay? What the hell? There's a gay pride flag on here. Nobody told me. Uh, so anyway, you might say, who is Nadia Shamas? I think everyone except for Nadia Shamas is saying, who is Nadia Shamas? Nadia Shamas is kind of bebopping around the industry. She's another one of those people who promotes their identity above everything. Uh, she actually got a Ms. Marvel graphic novel, which she weirdly does not mention here. And I think it's also the same reason that it was barely promoted at all. Even though when it was announced, there was heavy promotion. And then when it came out, it really wasn't. And I think, and I've run this past a few people, and they're like, yeah, that's what it was. I think Marvel just assumed Nadia was Muslim because it says Palestinian American. And I remember like a year or two ago, her Twitter feed was nothing about like Muslim food, Muslim holidays. So the implication was that if someone describes themselves as Arab and Palestinian American and their name is Nadia and they're always talking about Muslim food and holidays, they're probably, yeah, not Muslim. Um, so that was a little awkward because that's a pretty big matzo ball, no pun intended, uh, when you're writing Ms. Marvel for the racist uh, at Marvel where they brought back seg segregation and they said, if you, you want to write a Muslim, you got to be a Muslim. The only way you're allowed to not be a Muslim is if you're higher on the progressive stack and Muslims are pretty high up there. So like Mags Visaggio got to write a Ms. Marvel, I believe it was an annual. Uh, but everyone else, like, you have to be Muslim. So that was a little awkward because Palestine, Pakistan, they don't have anything to do with each other. <laughs> um, so it looks like they were kind of casting about. And then they said, well, you're not Muslim, but you're also not a straight white man. So come on into the X office. We are... We are just chock-a-block with uh, random people who live on Twitter and uh, identify only as their identity. You don't seem to have actual personalities, don't have sales, don't have talent, but they are a bunch of... Now, I had made a theory that Vita Ayala's time in comic was limited. It was going to be about as limited as Max's, which was about five years. This, I mean, it's a five-year trajectory from... Eisner nomination for your literally first mainstream work to a TV show to go fund multiple GoFundMe's in not just a year, like within a couple of months. So it looks like it's about five year tra trajectory for people who build themselves exclusively on their identity. But I think Vita might have enough points to actually reach escape 
velocity and to be there essentially indefinitely, especially if she is kind of seeding a company with people who owe her. Um, you know, uh, Mags only had trans and, and I guess gay as well, but Vita has, let's just go through it again, Afro, Latina, trans, non-binary, and of course, obviously, uh, gay. You might say, how can someone be trans and non-binary? Well, you can't, but it's still two more points. Um, so uh, excitedly promoting, yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> Nadia's barely written anything, and the one major work she did have uh, has basically been memory hold by the company because, oh, they broke their own rules. They hired a non-Muslim, non-trans person to write uh, uh, Ms. Marvel. So uh, gets uh, interesting right here. Uh, they got the coverage. And this was originally filling in for Benjamin Percy and Robert Gill. So Benjamin Percy has uh, been there. Does anyone remember this? When the Krakoa storyline was first announced, it was, it was Jonathan Hickman, Jerry Dugan, uh, Benjamin Percy, two other guys, and somebody pointed out, like, there's no women. And they're like, uh, no, we've got women. We've got a lot of women. So we just didn't tell you because it's so cool. And then a week later, they very obviously, hurriedly um, hired Vita and Leah Williams and Teeny Howard. And uh, okay, just <laughs> we. We did like, like this is a real one. Like that was just like the practice. Uh, so the funny, sad, and very predictable thing is that the people with a decade plus of experience and a career based on talent and sales, those were the best books. Benjamin Percy, Jerry Dugan, Jonathan Hickman. Uh, and then there's this little triumvirate uh, that is becoming a quadratic. I don't know what you say. It basically looks like the, the diversity crew got just even more diverse. Uh, so they are uh, welcoming in uh, Nadia Shamas apparently to uh, take uh, Benjamin Percy's place. This is where it gets really interesting. So uh, she announces it. And then uh, I also want to thank definitely Vita personally for being the most amazing support and holding my hand as I put together my first X-Men story ever. Vita plus Teeny Howard and Leah Williams are the X-Men experts and also just the absolute best. I, I, have, I have a question. What about the rest of the team? Now you might say this is a one-off, this doesn't mean anything, but everything means something. Um, and we've seen multiple times where Vita will say, I had a problem with a story and I went to Teeny Howard and Leah Williams and no one else. And so they've created this, uh, this little cohort which I always likened to, you know, when you see people climbing up a mountain and they're all connected. So if one person falls, the other person, the other people will bear the brunt. Um, and uh, honestly, the only one that's not fireable is is Vita because Vita has the most diversity points. Nadia has like one or two. Um, although the, I have noticed this new thing where uh, they'll put the uh, the heart, and then I guess that's the bisexual or it's it's like am i gay people are gay <laughs> am i gay lots of people are gay it's like i'm not saying i'm gay but there's something kind of gay-ish on my profile let's just assume i'm gay if it's if, if it's a benefit to me also let's just assume i'm a muslim if it's a benefit to me uh so i thought it was very interesting that uh vita without any real sales um, is kind of establishing herself as, you know, uh, someone who can invite people in and they're not <laughs> going to be invited in uh, if they look like uh, the creators of any of the characters that they're writing. Um, it's, I, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, what they say, you might not have noticed, but your brain did. For some reason, the female writers only mention each other while also writing the worst books and not going to any of the male writers. And it just feels like there's some sort of coup or some way to push out or make the others uncomfortable or just ostracize them. Um, I think uh, Vita is uh, not a smart person, but is very, very canny, uh, cynically monetizing their identity and then realizing the trajectory of Mags and saying, well, Mags didn't form alliances. Mags never had acolytes or protégés. So I'm gonna do that. And then when it's my turn for the chopping block, 
I get to point at the other people, hey, I invited you in. Uh, so not much to say besides that. It's just a theory. I have a lot of circumstantial evidence. I have an opinion. I always like when people get like super angry uh, when I make videos like this. It's like, you know what? J just write down all of the things I'm allowed to say. Just just write down a list and then I'll just read that off. Okay? Yeah, just, just, just you're in charge of me. Anyway, thanks for watching. Is This You? Is This You is having a very interesting time. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, one of the things that's so interesting about crowdfunding is it is changing so much that the lessons of last year mean almost nothing. It is, it is constant uh, uh, new lessons. It's a changing environment. So this one, it didn't have a massive first day, but it's just kind of chugging along quite nicely. And uh, the longer it can, you know, chug along the way it is, you know, uh, the better it is. I'm totally fine with that. You know, sometimes people are like, why don't you make a huge deal every time? Please look at the screen. It's my 20th project. <laughs> it's my 20th project. Like, everything, it's 20 in like four years. Like, there's been a lot of them. I just had like one last month and one the month before. Like, the books are special. I absolutely believe in and stand by the books, but I feel like the, the, the huge, make a huge deal is kind of a 2018, 2019 thing. And now it's just like uh, delivering, obviously me catching up on my late books, uh, then getting on time with my books and then getting ahead of time uh, with my books. There's been a lot of this year of just getting way ahead on multiple projects. And boy, <laughs> I would really like <laughs> to, to start for money to start coming in instead of it just going out for like six months to 12 months that's I don't know there, there's aspects where you know if you just become a pre-order system it's not as exciting but then people are happier so it's like and like I said all of this is changing like every year the crowdfunding landscape is completely different which is fun anyway thanks for watching